Good afternoon, traders. This is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com bringing you the weekly update, the weekly bias for the major currency pairs for the week ahead. That is for May 20th through May 25th. So um, we're just about an hour away from the Australian Open and we're going to take a look at the major currency pairs to see what's shaping up for next week. But before we continue, uh, let me draw a little bit of attention about the news that we're expecting this week and news that is more likely going to impact uh, our market. So for uh, today, Sunday 19th and for Monday the 20th, uh, we have a lot of bank holidays in Europe and it's going to be a very, very light day of trading. So therefore, there are no high impact news scheduled for these two days or so for today, Sunday and for Monday. Uh, for Tuesday, what we're going to pay attention to is at 4.30 a.m., uh, UK, United Kingdom CPI, that is uh, likely to uh, be tradable for those uh, traders that uh, trade early hours. And uh, also, uh, if you are in a trade, make sure you give it uh, an appropriate stop as wiggles are occurring around that time frame. So 4.30 a.m., make sure you adjust your overnight stops if you have any overnight trades. Also, on Wednesday, the 22nd, we have United Kingdom retail sales that coming in at 4.30 a.m., but uh, same thing, pay attention to uh, if you're in overnight trades, pay attention to the, your stop areas. And uh, if you're an early trader, you can even trade the deviation. So make sure you pay attention to the news. Also at 8.30 a.m., Canadian, uh, Canadian dollar, uh, Canada core retail sales. Again, we're going to pay attention to those. At 10 o'clock, we have U.S. existing home sales. So we're going to pay attention uh, on the U.S. dollar uh, currency pairs. And at 2 o'clock, we have the FOMC meeting minutes. We should see if we should have any surprises there. And uh, wrapping up the week on Thursday at 10 a.m. with U.S. new home sales. Uh, that is scheduled, like I said, at 10 a.m. And then for Friday, we have no impact uh, news, no high impact news scheduled. Uh, so therefore, we're going to have a pretty light week um, in terms of uh, European news. So we're going to focus more on the at the beginning of the week on the UK uh, reportings that are going to be at 4.30 a.m. So on Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, we're going to pay attention to our U.S. news that is con going to come up at around 10. If you're a beginner trader, I suggest you stay away from the market till about 9.30 a.m. until the dust settles, until all the fleecing is gone. Uh, and this is for day traders. If you're a larger time frame trader, by all means, you could, uh, you could stay in trades, but make sure you have appropriate stops to appropriate support and resistance levels and as well as pivot points. All right, so that being said, let's start with the Euro dollar. And right in front of us, we have a monthly chart of the Euro dollar. So as you can see right here on Friday, uh, we traded to 1.2832. And you could see right here that we have a lot of resistance right into this area. And this is going to be the test for this week. If this area holds, we're most likely going to bounce off this area that we're currently trading on. But the more we test it to the lower side, to or around 2750, that, that is going to be a short signal for the euro dollar. And it's going to enter a much larger tradable void up to 2400, right about in this area where my cursor is, and even lower to 2200 and 2100. So we're going to pay attention to that now. For moving to a smaller time frame, which is the which is the four hour, this is the area that we're going to pay attention to. So pretty pretty much, it kind of settled into one one point two eight zero zero area, right about in this area. So we're going to watch this consolidation very carefully for larger time frames. 
uh, for time frame traders, we're going to watch for a signal below 1.2800 and we're going to give it a little bit more stop. So again, this is for larger time frame traders. That uh, appropriate stop would be right above 1.2925. So again, it's going to be at around a fulcrum area. So this is the bias for the euro dollar, most likely going to continue lower. We're going to focus on the larger time frames. But if you're a day trader, you can capture some of the movements, even a counter, counter trend trade around this area. If this area is being tested, 2850, you could take it as a counter trend trade up to around this area of 2900. And again, it's not a guarantee. Uh, counter trend trader uh, counter trend trades um, are uh, are a little bit difficult in terms of follow through so you might as well go with the general flow of the currency pair okay so uh, let's focus now on the pound dollar and as well I'm gonna put it on the monthly chart so you can see the consolidation that is happening right now right into this area it closed on Friday at 1.5167 it does have high odds of continuing lower again we're gonna pay attention to this on Tuesday and Wednesday when we're gonna have that news that is coming going to come out at 4 30 a.m. both days the UK CPI and the UK retail sales and on a negative deviation, we're going to look for a bigger follow through to the downside. And again, this is a monthly chart. The uh, area that we're going to uh, we're going to probably look to fill is going to be at around four one point four eight zero zero. Uh, now we're going to focus on the daily chart on the same currency pair, pound dollar. And again, you could see right here that it has tested the support area and it has breached it a little bit, making it with a uh, high odds of continuing lower into 5100. So this is the target area for the pound dollar. In terms of stops, we're going to look at the four hour chart and we're going to pay attention to pivot and also previous day's high that is at about 1.5320, also fulcrum area. And again, we've talked of targets, so we could see, uh, we could probably see a, a, a much steeper follow through to at least 1.5100 uh, uh, short term. All right, let's move ahead to the dollar yen. Dollar yen, again, no reason to short this currency pair. Uh, let's take a look at the monthly chart. Again, I'm going to take my cursor. So over 101, we have passed, surpassed, actually, the resistance area. We're continuing higher. and We're going to look into targets into 107 and 110. So again, we're long biased into this currency pair and we're going to look for actually every dip to be viable. So again, if you look at the daily chart, you can see that every dip was actually viable past this very heavy resistance area over 100, which is also a big psychological number for this currency pair. All right, so let's move forward to the four hour chart. So you can see the major consolidation that is happening right now is under 102. All right, and it broke resistance on uh, above 102.80. So um, if we're going to get a pullback, more likely that this area is going to be tested 102.80. If this area is going to be breached, more likely it's going to be to pull back a little uh, a little steeper than that uh, and even test any area up to 101.85. So again, we're long buys on this. I would watch the one hour chart and the four hour chart and I would buy every dip on the dollar yen. Moving forward, let's take a look at the dollar Swissy. So I call this a mirror trade uh, compared to the euro dollar. So this looks higher as the euro dollar looks a little lower. So again, in this case, again, this uh, major area right here of 0 0.9750, it has been tested. And this is the four hour chart. So again, we're looking for a long bias in this currency pair, dollar Swissy, uh, and we're looking at this support area of 0 0.9576 if this area holds and if this area is breached this could actually be the stop and another entry above this area would be appropriate for another leg higher looking at the daily chart you can see the extended moves to the upside we have uh, surpassed um, uh, and traded over this major resistance areas over 0 0.9552 and to look at a weekly chart to uh, uh, have a better image of a, of the next resistance area that we're going to encounter 
going to be, so this is gonna be our target for longer term trading. Uh, and again, it's going to be 0 0.9920. So this is the follow through that we're expecting to get for the following week. But don't forget that we're gonna get a, a, a slight, a, a, a very slow next week. So we're gonna see how that's gonna shape up. All right, let's look at our next currency pair, which is the Euro Yen. Okay, let me just pull it up real quick. All right, and we're gonna start with the monthly chart of this one, and we're into a lot of resistance coming into this. So again, um, it closed on Friday at uh, 132.43, which is just about this area. You see this huge area of consolidation right here. A lot of noise into this area, but it's still, it's going to be a very choppy. If we're gonna have a follow through to the upside, it's going to be rather a little choppy. Now let's take a look at the daily chart. And again, we see that it has been choppy. It has been going uh, through the resistance of 127.50 it has consolidated above that area so we're gonna look on the four-hour chart and again the game plan for the euro yen currency pair any trade that trades uh, uh, any uh, any trade if, if we're gonna trade I'm sorry above 132.70 this could be a single for a long entry right into this area with a protective stop under 131.15 so this is going to be the stop area so this is the game plan for the euro yen for the following week uh moving to the next one it's going to be the aussie dollar huge uh, follow through for the Aussie dollar. You can see it right here on the monthly. We have reached a heavy support area and we're going to be very careful in this area. Um, now, again, we're going to uh, take a look at the weekly chart. Again, you can see this area that has been almost tested right, right here. It still has some short momentum. So we're going to see how that is going to react. We're going to keep our short bias. This is the daily chart. We're going to keep our short bias and if you look at the four hour chart, you could see right here, it has not um, even bounced a little bit, not even a pullback. So we're gonna look to trade this currency pair, Aussie dollar, uh, again, short. And uh, let's take a look at the 15 minute to um, uh, better identify the consolidations that we have right into this area. Okay, so here we have the 15 minutes. So any breach of this area, of uh, 9725 is going to trigger a short signal and the stop area is gonna be right above 0 0.9776. So this is going to be the stop area. And for follow through, uh, we're gonna take a look at the weekly chart as we have a lot of follow through into 9700 and 9600 for target areas. So we have quite, quite large target area. Okay, and now let's take a look at the dollar, Canadian dollar uh, bias. And right in front of us, we have a weekly chart of the dollar, Canadian dollar. You could see the pop right here. It closed on Friday at 1.0275. It has reached a lot of, uh, it has reached this area of resistance. Uh, now we're gonna pay attention right into the resistance. Don't forget that on, on uh, Monday, there is a Canadian bank holiday, so it's not gonna be wild, wi uh, widely traded. Uh, but again, right here into resistance area, we're gonna see how this area is tested. The more it consolidates at the top of this range, the more odds it has to break this area and move even higher with a target at 1.4. And again, it's gonna be 1.04. Uh, zero zero and it's gonna be uh, zero one oh, I'm sorry one point zero four five zero so these are the two target areas that we're gonna look for higher so uh, weekly bias on the dollar Canadian dollar we're looking for higher and this is the daily chart right here uh, and on the four hour time frame we're gonna look at this consolidation to the left uh, we have just traded right above that. We just made a new peekable new high right into this area. So we're going to watch for a pullback right into this area on the one hour or four hour chart. This is the four hour. Oh, this is the one hour chart right here. So we're going to look for a pullback right into this area and that pullback might be viable. So make sure you put this, put your stop under the support area, under, under the pivot area and uh, take the breakout under the resistance area. And for the last currency pair that we're going to take a look at, it is the Euro Swissy. 
Okay, and we're going to start with the largest time frame on this one. You could see a rounded bottom right here into this area. I like this currency pair a lot. It has reached a lot of resistance on Friday. Closed at one point. 2470 it still has a little bit more upside to it this is the weekly chart you could see that it has reached this area the more it consolidates into this area the more it will have high odds of continuing higher into 2600 so that being said we're going to take a look at the daily you could see right here a congestion that is trying to press higher and looking at the one hour chart to narrow our entry so far we have reached this area of resistance this should be the stop right here so any entry that you choose you should make make sure that you place a protective stop under 1.23 a2 and you might even try it higher under previous day's high right here into this area of 2480 so again it has high it's continuing higher so uh this was the forecast for and the bias for this uh for the following week the week of uh, may 20th to uh, may 24th 2013 uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, uh, make sure uh, you can contact us at info at tradeoutloud.com. For more information about our style of trading and our education, you can visit our website at www.tradeoutloud.com. You can like us on our Facebook page. Uh, it's facebook.com slash tradeoutloud. And make sure if you enjoy these videos, if you consider they're helpful to your trading, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll hope to hear from you soon. And uh, see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.